Emily Taylor here in my studio. It's Monday and um, Monday, May 3rd. Um, I am excited to kind of talk about the final wrap up from my 30 day creative challenge and talk about what I did, what I learned. And um, then also uh, I have I have some exciting announcements about what's coming up in May. So I hope that you will enjoy the, the things that I have planned. Um, so behind me, you can see, these are just a few of the things that I did over my 30 day challenge. Um, for the most part, I'm kind of excited about it just because what happened was in the middle of my challenge, I was really struggling to kind of uh, continue. Um, hello, Amy. Um, so in the middle of the challenge, I was a little bit, I was getting, let me turn off my music. How about that? <laughs> um, I was having a hard time moving forward and, and pushing through, which is exactly the reason I did this challenge. And um, the result is I learned so much about how to be creative and when I need to be creative. I have a limited window of time each day where I feel like I can be in my studio and have the energy and stamina and can apply the mental um, capacity to, to do my best work. So um, the, we, we started out kind of talking about at the beginning of April, talking about this 70, 20, 10 rule, which is 70% of the work will be kind of mediocre, 20% will be horrible, 10% will be awesome. Um, and so I've kind of just pulled up some of the things um, that this isn't everything that I that I worked on during the 30 day challenge, but these are the things that probably taught me the most. Um, first of all, I'll point out what are my favorite things and why, and um, then talk about the failures and what I learned from my failures. So um, let's just, maybe let's just start. My favorite, my very favorite thing that I did was the frog. I think he turned out really, really well. I did have to take two attempts at him because one night I was tired and I was working, I wasn't happy with it. And I, um, and I left him, I didn't press him down and I let him simmer overnight. and. That was something I don't always do. A lot of times I'm in a huge rush to just finish something and I want to get done with it and I want to move on. And so I press it before I should, and then I'm stuck with it. So for example, with this little landscape, that's what I did. I was working on it all day and I just wanted to be done with it. And so I went ahead and pressed everything. And then I woke up the next morning and I could see my, my errors and my mistakes and I couldn't change it. So anyway, that was one lesson that I learned let my brain simmer and walk away from it and come back with fresh eyes the next day. And if I'm still, if I'm happy with it, then I can press it down. If I'm not happy with it, then I can still take pieces off. So that's part of the reason I really like the frog because I feel like I allowed my brain to a little, you know, relax, take a break and come back. And I, I just, I love the, the fabric selection with him, I think the fabric, I, I, I was pretty bold with my fabric. And um, I just, he he's my 10%. He's the one that I just nailed out of all of these. I think that's the one. Um, I'm also really, really happy with the way the ladybug turned out. So those two are, well, and I, I'm happy with the beetle as well. The crab I'm happy with, but it's okay. It's, it's fine. Um, I'm less satisfied with the goldfish. I, I think it turned out okay, but I'm less satisfied with it. And the iguana is, I'm not satisfied with it at all. But again, I have pressed it already and I can't, I'm not gonna go back. So what I may do with the iguana um, is I might just start over entirely. I might leave it. I'm just gonna walk away from it and keep moving forward right now. Um, but as I went through this process and I kind of learned, well, let me tell you one other interesting thing that I learned. I really want to be an impressionist landscape artist. I want to be able to do things like this and feel like I'm really satisfied, but that's not my strength. My strength seems to be in 
these little critters. And I'm so much more happy doing these. They come much more naturally. And so, you know, a lot of times we tend to focus on our weakness and try and improve where we're weak rather than really focusing on our strength and just going with our strength. And so that's kind of what, you know what, I was like, I'm going to just allow myself to go with what I can see as my strong point. My strong point is kind of these more intricate designs, the the realistic looking um, critters. And I'm just going to let go of this idea of doing landscapes right now. Now, maybe I'll come back to those, but that's not my strength. So I'm going to really play to my strengths going forward. Um, and, and, and that's with these critters. So you'll notice with the critters, um, I just kept doing them. And then I began to say, oh, this is going to be a wonderful alphabet quilt. We've I mentioned that before. And so I welcome your input about critters that you might like to see in the alphabet. So we've got F for frog, L for ladybug, C for crab, G for goldfish, B for beetle, I for iguana. We might do away with the iguana and do a different one. Um, but anyway, I've kind of worked out what I want to do for the entire alphabet. So I'm really excited about that. And I think that will be the topic of my um, my my workshop, my live workshop in Midway, Utah in June of 2022. So if you, again, are interested in signing up for that, you can find that um, information on my website because that is a go. We are going to do that. Um, I want to tell all of you, thank you so much for joining me. It's really fun to see you. Um, some of the same people that have, have hopped on every Monday morning to kind of see what I'm doing. So Anyway, we are wrapping up uh, my 30 day challenge, but I'm going to take everything that I've learned and I'm going to keep going in that direction. Um, I didn't produce as many pieces as I as I wanted to because I allowed myself to get distracted with the business and whatnot. But um, I think I, I've learned a lot and I'm going to take everything that I've learned and move forward and kind of try to incorporate a daily creative time set aside at least a two to four hour window every day where I can just be in my studio working on something that makes me so happy. And I love being able to do that. So I am going to continue with that. And now we're going to move into May. We're launching a new quilt along in the collage quilter Academy Facebook group. And some of you have already heard about it. Let me just share what the what some more of the details. So for May, we are working on these floral collage quilts. We're doing this one, the uh, orchid and the pansies. And um, so here are the details. Here's how it's going to work. <laughs> um any so i invite you to join along every single monday i'll be talking about tips for making these two quilts and i'll show you my progress in finishing them up so i'm still going to add some lemons we talked about that down here in this little bowl and then i'm going to quilt them so you'll see how i quilt them and um so, and then we're doing a giveaway. So if you uh, are in that Facebook group um, and you post a progress picture, it doesn't matter if it's even just your, um, your fabric selection. So post a picture of your fabric selection or post your progress on one of these, these designs in that Facebook group. And then every Monday I will announce a winner and the winners will be receiving uh, access to a webinar. Uh, we'll give away free bundles of fabric. Um, we'll give away a book. So we're going to have a lot of fun making these um, flowers in the in our May quilt along. Um, so in addition to uh, in addition to the giveaway and the videos that we'll be doing, um, we also I also have two webinars that that are paid webinars that will go a deep dive into making both of these. 
So the one for the Orchid is this Saturday, May 8th. I believe there are still some seats in that. It's 20 bucks to join me in there. And then we'll be in a live format where I go through everything and you can ask me any questions about that. Uh, May 22nd is the webinar for the Potted Pansies. And same thing, um, we'll do a deep dive uh, and um, questions, answers, demonstration. We'll talk all about how to be successful with making both of these patterns. So May 8th here, May 22nd here, you can sign up for those on my website. Um, and I will be giving away, you know, the free access to one of probably this class, if it doesn't fill up um, in the giveaway. So um, I also have another big announcement. Um, let me share it. So, you know, we are doing fabric bundles that we're, that we're making available. The blue fabric bundle will be available um, this week. We've got that all cut and it is gorgeous. I am so excited to share that with you. In addition, we have a brand new pink fabric bundle that's available and a brand new green fabric bundle that's available. So let's see, here's part of my green right here. I think this is my favorite. So this green collection is entirely different from the, the, first, the first version. Um, I just want you to see some of these beautiful fabrics and I've started using some of them in the collage quilts that I've been working on. But again, with all of my fabric bundles, it's a wide assortment, 18 pieces of fabric uh, that range from light to dark and warm to cool. So anyway, I don't know if you can see all that, but beautiful. And then the new, so we have a brand new green, brand new pinks that are in those bundles. And um, so anyway, we're launching those. And now let me, um, let me take any questions. So if you all have questions about making a collage, um, anything that you might be working on, I am happy to answer them while we have a few minutes. So, oh, hedgehog, yes, Connie mentioned a hedgehog, hedgehog for H. That's actually, I have been thinking the same thing. I was originally thinking a hair for H, for the letter H, but then I thought, no, a hedgehog just kind of fits right into those little teeny critters. So I love that idea, I think that's what we'll do. Um, so let's go forward and make sure I've covered everything. So we're saying goodbye to the 30 day challenge. Um, I'm just recapping in my head, the May, the quilt along throughout May that, that will include multiple giveaways every week. And all you have to do is post a photo of your progress and we'll, we'll give away, I'll announce the winners in this live video on Mondays and, um, we have the new fabric bundles. So anyway, there's a lot going on. I'm kind of excited. So let's take some, let, let me go through the questions and see if there are any questions. And I also, you know, I love your feedback, your suggestions, what you'd like to work on or, or you know, suggestions that you'd like for me to create. Um, I, I love to hear from you. And I often do incorporate everything that you tell me. <laughs> so, okay, so Amy says she can't wait for the alphabet quilt pattern. I'm super excited about that as well. I think that's gonna be really fun. I'm just ecstatic about the way it's, it's coming together. Um, so, hello everybody from Germany, Chicago. Um, thank you, Shirley. Okay, Angela from Costa Rica, great to see you again. Thanks for being here. Um, and Laurel from Saskatchewan. I hope I said that right. That's kind of a tricky word. Okay. Uh, let's see. So Connie said the hedgehog. Love it. Um, Mary, I thought about doing a sloth for S and I have actually decided cause I, I considered that, but I've actually decided I'm going to do a snail. So I'm working on that. It's, I'll show, there's not much to show right now. Let me see if I can pull it over here. Oh yeah, there's, there's really not much to show, but I'll show it next week because this is, that's what I'm gonna work on for the sloth, the big snail about that big. I think that will be really fun for S. Um, okay, 
Let's see. So we've got a few people coming on Saturday. That will be fantastic. Um, Sherry asked, what about red? Yes, red is absolutely in the cards. We'll be working on that. I have a few red bolts already, but we will definitely be bringing in red. I mean, my goal is to bring in every colorway. And um, so red will be on the docket. Uh, let's see. So here's somebody that just said, will SAS2 work on felt or wool? Um, here, is, here are my thoughts about that. Uh, if you want to use light seam 2, so that's what she's referring to. Light seam 2 is a double-sided fusible web. If you want to use that on felt or wool, I recommend um, testing it. Always test your product if it's not something that I've used. My only um, concern or thought about that is that in order to activate the fusible, you need to steam it really well and wool does, it will shrink. So if it, if you're, if your fabric hasn't, if your wool fabric hasn't already been pre-shrunk, which I'm assuming a lot of it has, um, you'll need to be aware of that, that the steam will probably shrink your wool. So just take a snip of it, snip of it and test it. Test, test, test. That is kind of my, my mantra. I am always experimenting and I encourage you to always experiment if there's something that um, you have a question about. So give that a try, okay? And then um, Susan just asked, what are the sizes of each piece in the bundle? So what I've done for each fabric piece that comes in my bundle, they are eighth of a yard cuts by the width of fabric, which means they are four and a half inches by the width of fabric. And the reason that I like this size for collage quilting is because we really need a wide variety of fabric when we're making a collage quilt, but we don't need huge quantities of the same fabric. So this is a nice small quantity. And the other reason that I really, really love it is because, so if I'm, go if I'm going to use this for a project, I can just slice off a piece of it, you know, a small rectangle that's maybe six or eight inches. And then I can prepare that piece with my steam seam. And then the rest of it folds up really nicely so that it stays tidy. So that's the reason that I have cut these pieces. We go through a lot of effort to curate each piece and then cut them. So they are, so every bundle has 18 of those pieces that are eighth of a yard cuts and they range from light to dark and I incorporate warm and cool versions of the same color. So if you've taken one of my classes before, or you've heard my lecture about temperature and value and increasing the spectrum that you use. And so my fabric bundles go right along with kind of my philosophy for creating a successful collage quilt. So anyway, um, I hope that answers your question, Susan. Um, Mary, oh, thank you, Mary, for mentioning this. So, um, Mary just asked, is the pansies pattern coming soon? So we, I have just finished writing the pansies pattern. Um, we've got it printed on a foundation panel. So the pansies pattern is one of my pre-printed foundation panels that is ready. And we are just packaging them up in the next today and tomorrow and we'll sh start shipping them ASAP. So my goal was to get them done by Saturday. They weren't done. Um, so we're working on getting those out. They're available for pre-order right now. And um, they are on sale through the end of today. The Pansies pattern is a, I don't know, it's five or $7 off right now. And that one is a pre-printed foundation panel. Now she asked also, will that be available as a download? Yes, I like to make my patterns available as downloads for my international customers and frankly, anybody that wants to buy a download. Um, so I will work on that this week and try and get that launched this week as well, the download pattern. Um, and then if you've pre-ordered the foundation panel, it will be going out in the next couple of days. So thank you for reminding me about that, Mary. Um, the orchid panel pattern is available now. It is available both as a physical pattern and 
a downloadable pattern, but the orchid is a parchment pressing pattern. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to offer both. Um, the orchid seems to lend itself a little bit easier to uh, parchment pressing. And, and yet I've had so many requests for another foundation panel pattern. So we turned the pansies into the foundation panel. Okay, so um, Kay says, I wish there was a simplified software to make prints. Most are not beginner friendly. Um, Kay, I'm not really certain. Um, I, I'm not really certain what you mean by that. So if you, if you wanna email me, um, I'll talk about it some more with you. A simplified software to make prints. Uh, maybe she means taking a photograph and turning it into uh, a, an easy way to make a, a design. Um, and I, I get a lot of requests for that. How do I work with my own image to create my own pattern from my own image? And I think we're going to be offering that class and that will be something too that we focus on in the live class in Midway, Utah next year, the, the workshop. Um, we'll be talking about how to take, take photographs that you've created or that you've purchased and then turning, turning it into a piece of art. Um, the reason that I haven't done that until now is because I think that that's a pretty advanced it, require, it requires a lot of effort to do that um, because the easiest way to think of that is I, I think you have to have a foundation in kind of understanding a collage quilt and understanding this art, theory, this color theory that goes into a collage quilt before jumping into your own photograph. To jump into a photograph, especially a portrait that a lot of people like to do, um, that's difficult because there's so much information in a photograph. There's color information and there's value information. And most, most of the time there are dozens of values that you're looking at in a photograph. So you have to be able to kind of dumb that down or simplify that a little bit so that you have few, fewer values that you're working with. And therefore, I think it's okay to just start with a pattern that begins with, um, you know, that's designed to um, have a fewer number of values. So that's how my patterns work. I, I, I dumb them down, I simplify them so that we're working with just a small, a much smaller set of values. Um, and then that makes the whole process a lot easier. So once people have gotten their feet wet and they kind of learn that and understand how the process works, then I think it's okay to jump to your own project. Um, but again, I still think there's a lot to teaching somebody how to have success with that. So I, that's something I will be offering and working on very soon. Um, okay. So <laughs> somebody said a skunk S for skunk. I have thought about a skunk too. I think a skunk would be darling. Um, so maybe we'll offer multiple multiple uh, critters for each letter because S has a whole bunch. I mean, you could do skunk, squirrel, snail, scorpion. Um, so it just depends. Uh, so anyway, I love the idea of a skunk too. Okay, so somebody just asked, where do I get the pansy pattern? You can buy the pansy pattern exclusively on my website, collagequilter.com. And um, I love the hedgehog idea too. Somebody said P for pat, panda. Um, I think what we'll do is P for parrot because I've got this cute parrot done and I love the colors, but I have thought panda as well. But the other thing too is I want to keep, if I can, if it's possible, I want to keep most of those little alphabet critters, smaller critters, um, so that I'm not dealing with gigantic critters right now. Um, I just think smaller critters are cute. They're and and then to my, you know, if you look at what I've done already, the beetle and the ladybug and the crab, they're all small, but they're they're bigger in size than than they would be in real life. So anyway, that's just that's those are just my thoughts. Um, okay, Laurel asks. So I gather you use parchment paper, then transfer to cloth. 
So Laurel, I have two methods that I use. Yes, one involves creating my design on parchment paper. Um, and I saw a question that somebody had asked in my one of my Facebook groups about that. So the idea is I'm using this parchment paper because parchment paper is nonstick and it's heat resistant. So I can build a design on the parchment paper. And then when I have it finished the way I like it, I can press everything with a dry iron and then the whole thing peels off in one piece. So it's kind of ingenious. So then I can peel this whole thing off and put it in the composition that I'm working on. Um, so I just want to show you the background. So you see the background, you can see that's the re reverse side of the fabric. And then look, it still has the, the steam seam is still on the back from all those pieces and they stick together. Uh, so it's just a it's just a really fun, easy way for me to create smaller elements. Um, and I have a, you know, I can sit at a smaller table and do that. Um, having said that, I do love working on a foundation panel. Those are the easiest, the most fun. I love doing that. And so that's why I'm super excited about the pansies because I haven't done a new foundation panel pattern for a long time. So anyway, Laurel, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, let's see, here's some feedback. Work from back to front of the pattern and then dark to light fabric where possible. I found that helped in making the cactus, especially the flowers and the center cacti. Okay, so great. So she's talking about the layering of the fabric. She starts with the back and things that would be in the background moving forward. Now I'm terrible, I don't always do that, but that is a really smart and good idea. So great suggestion, thank you very much. Um, Carolyn just asked, where do I order the different color materials? So Carolyn, um, I have found that it's, you need to find a quilt shop that will sell you fabric in one eighth of a yard increments. Not all fabric shops do that. A lot of brick and mortar shops will do that, local shops. Not all of them though. And that, and especially online, there are very few online shops. In fact, I haven't found an online shop that will, um, that you can order a whole bunch of fabric and just have it um, cut in one eighth of a yard increments. And that's the reason that I've made it available on my website. So I sell bundles that are colored bundles or, you know, green, pink, blue, brown, purple. We're just launching blue. So um, that is where I recommend now buying at least get it. It's a foundation, right? So it's 18 pieces. So that will, that will help you. I hope Carolyn. Um, and you can get them on my website, collagequilter.com. Okay, so Doris said, Doris Baker said, Hi, Emily, I can't wait for the May 22nd class. Hello from Maine, and thank you for making fabric available. You are welcome. Thank you, Doris, for joining me in class. I look forward to that. Um, okay, uh, here's a Facebook user that said, If I'm not available Saturday, can I watch later? So yes, if you register for the one of the webinars on Saturdays, I record it and you all, if you, if you're registered and paid, I will send you the recording for you to view at any time in the future that's convenient for you. Um, let's see, Doris also asked, can we order fabric and have it shipped with the pattern for the pansies that I pre-ordered? The answer is yes. Um, Linda said, hello, Emily, are any of these classes for beginners? Um, you know, the, I think they are pretty, pretty simple. Um, the orchid pattern is is very, it's a really simple um, pattern. If you look at the gray tone, um, you'll see how, how really pretty simple it is. Um, if you wanna go super, super beginner pattern, um, I recommend doing the Felicity pattern. It's absolutely foolproof. But I think if you take a class with me and do the, 
either one of these, but the pansies pattern, um, because it's on the foundation panel is, is really beginner friendly. Um, so those I recommend. Um, okay. So Kay, I think I answered your question. Collaging with, uh, with photos, um, photo to pattern sounds great. Yep. I think that would be really fun. Oh, Amy, thank you. Thank you for all of those suggestions. I love the idea of a cricket. Dragonfly, eel, flamingo, ferret, hornet, jellyfish, koala, lemur, newt, octopus, seahorse. Look at you go, girl. <laughs> okay, so cool. We've got quite a few of those in common. Um, I will be doing a vulture and a tortoise. And I think for, for Kay, I'll be actually doing a Katie did. Um, eels make me, make me ooh, they're creepy. So I haven't committed to the eel yet for E. But um, anyway, and I, I honestly, for the, the for the why, I think I'm going to do a yellow jacket and I'll, I'll probably do. a I don't know. We'll see. I'm making it up as I go along. <laughs> um, OK, so somebody said, is your horse pattern available as a download? Um, no, the horse pattern is not available to download. It is an advanced pattern and it is too difficult for me to scale down so that you can print it out and um, and tile, you know, tape the template, template together. That just it's that's just too difficult. So I apologize. Some of those more difficult patterns are too hard to create as downloads and you will you would hate yourself trying to trace all of that. So the some of those hard ones just they're so much better in the, as a foundation panel. Um, I do offer flat rate shipping, international shipping though. So if that's helpful, there you go. Um, okay, let's see, any other questions? Um, somebody did the mallard from my book, awesome. I think the duck might be for our D. Um, okay. Good, good, good. Great questions, great suggestions. I love to hear from you guys. Um, somebody just asked, are the fabric bundles available for specifically for a pattern? So the purple, no, I don't, I don't have a kit um, specifically for these. I will do kits again in the future. I just wanna explain kind of how we did our last kit was the Cardinal. There were 20 pieces of fabric in that and we had to cut them, you know, like that. And that was super, super labor intensive. So uh, I, until I can figure out how to just make it an easier kit to provide to you, I won't be offering kits. And that's part of the reason we're doing the, the fabric bundles because it's such a labor intensive thing when I'm using dozens of pieces of fabric. So you know, if I were to count up all the blues in this, there are probably well over a dozen blues. There are probably at least that many greens and at least that many purples. So what we've done is we've put most of the purples that I've used are in the fabric bundle and then the greens, same thing. So that's the reason that we haven't kitted it because these the fabric bundle that you purchase has a lot of what's in here. Um, and it doesn't, you don't have to have the specific fabrics because what you're concerned with really is the range of values. So um, anyway, that's, that's that. Um, let me see. I think that's all of the questions. Um, I just want to, oh, here's another one. Is the ORCID webinar using the downloadable pattern? Is it parchment pressing technique? So the ORCID, yes, it is available as a download. And yes, we are using the parchment pressing technique with the ORCID. So if you're interested in learning that parchment pressing technique with me, um, that is a great webinar to be a part of because we'll walk through that step by step. Um, so hopefully that answers your question and gives you the confidence to try. I think it's really helpful to work right alongside me so that you can um, ask questions as you go and get the confidence that you need to, to dive in and start creating. Um, Susan just said, I love using your templates with my fabric stash. Oh, I'm so glad to use that. 
that or to hear that, Susan. That's the thing. Collage quilts, yeah, you can buy my fabric bundles, but really it's I want you to dive into your fabric stash. Every quilter has a stash of fabric. Now think of using it in, in little scraps. Just think of organizing it a little bit differently so that you can use all of your fabrics scraps and pre-cuts and old pieces of fabric. Now they have a new use. So um, anyway, let's see. Um, I think I'm just waiting for, if there are any other questions, I will get to them. Um, I just want to tell you how grateful I am for this quilt community. It gives me such satisfaction and I'm so happy that I can share my what I love to do with all of you and and you all have been so kind and good to me and to everybody else in the Facebook groups. It is really a ray of sunshine and I'm so grateful for all of you. Thank you for your goodness, for your kindness and um, let's make the world a more beautiful gentle place through our through our common craft. Okay, so I hope you all have a wonderful day and stay healthy, stay safe, spread goodness and light in the world. And I will talk to you again next week. Okay, I hope you'll join me in, um, in the quilt along. Okay, that's, that's that, that's a wrap. We will see you again soon. If you have any questions, you can find me in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. You can leave a comment on my YouTube videos or you can email me directly, emily at collagequilter.com. Thanks for being here.